global wire collaboration enables us to be the world first car company to be able to drive with the mixed reality headset on the real road. With XR1, we are able to explore digital objects as natural extensions of the real world. Vara's vision is to create mixed reality where you cannot tell apart anymore what is real and what is virtual. We wouldn't be able to test active safety scenarios against a real person. For the first time, we could overlay virtual objects such as virtual pedestrians and virtual mooses. We were able to expose them to that scenario. It creates an emotion when they see that the car saved both their life, but also uh, the people around the car. The headset is the world's best eye tracking system. It allows us to interact with our eyes in real time and also being able to capture uh, what the users are looking at while we drive on the road. I'm creating uh, an experience through lights in the interior of the car. And yeah, often it's difficult to simulate uh, light. I can't really touch light and I can't really create the light. All of a sudden I can create whatever light environment I want to have in the car. The future is here. You can literally recreate whatever you want and simulating in a way that you can't even know if it's real or not. So the Vario XR1 headset is really a game changer when it comes to speeding up the development process. On the road, we could add any feature or graphics or design. We could actually make the car see a virtual object and react to it as if it was a real object. We could also see what did the driver look at during the test. To understand the driver behavior is a key part of the development. You have a mixed reality where it starts to be possible to have things where you doubt yourself. Is that real? Is it mixed reality? Is it virtual? What is it? Vara's vision has been from the very beginning to create photorealistic mixed reality where you cannot tell apart anymore what is real and what is virtual. We use very high quality cameras that are incredibly low latency and they are able to capture the reality, digitize it in real time, mix it, bend it however we want and then what we do is that we show it through our human eye resolution VR headset. And this is what makes the XR1 truly unique. Hello, and welcome to Varios' first webinar, which we are now together sharing with Volvo. And uh, the content will be about world's first mixed reality car that we developed together with Volvo during the past year and a half. Yes. So, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you guys to the webinar. I'm Ura Kantori, the founder and chief product officer at Vario. And yes, my name is Kasper Wickman <coughs> and I work as a senior technical leader at Volvo Cars and uh, mainly with the task to put the user in the experience while we are developing cars because we want to be able to understand what we are developing and what the value is for the customer during development. So we thought to start the <coughs> story from the very beginning. So Varia was founded in 2016 and with the premise that uh, we believed that really to create a perfect mixed reality, we should do it by digitizing the real world in real time, mixing with the virtual content and then showing to the people through normal VR headsets. Now in the very beginning, we thought as a company that we would be doing an add-on to existing VR headsets. And our very first demonstrator that you see on the left is a result of two days of hard work uh, by yours truly on the hardware side, as well as then uh, doing software demonstrations of it for the investors. Then uh, a couple of days after that one, we had a very high fidelity version with tremendously good mechanics that you see uh, on the other image that we actually then showed to the investors, which basically founded Vario as a result of those demos. So we'll show you now uh, the very first experience of Vario's mixed reality. So again, this was before Vario existed, no name existed at that stage. And we let our investors see this and feel this experience for the very first time. 
a few days just had been put into this one. But the interesting thing is that it showed the value very concretely of the mixed reality. Because in there, when you do it with video pass through, you're in control of everything that the user sees. You can change every single pixel in there. And the latency was uh, prominently good enough even at this stage that you could see that there is a track to make it fast enough so that you don't get any nausea and things feel actually real. Okay, good. So then uh, 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 one month after we had actually been um, running the company, we continued very aggressively showing to ourselves the value of the mixed reality. And these are the demos we didn't do to anybody else, just for ourselves to see the potential. On the first one, you see on the right-hand side uh, a real toy car, on the left-hand side uh, a virtual mock-up, a copy of the toy car, which is still behaving uh, the, in the same light model as the real car, reflecting the world around it completely realistically. Mm. Then, second one uh, is a daylight at our uh, very first office. But we have been dimming the world around you so that it fits into this very moody uh, atmosphere of the dark side of the Earth. Uh, the point is that every single pixel can be touched and you can alter the world that the user is in. And all of these ones have been actually taken into use in the, yeah. in the Volvo Mixed Reality car. Then, you can even do things that twist the world behind it, refract the world like optics do. You can create objects that cast shadows like this light onto the floor uh, and objects that can even create light into the real world. So this is of course a virtual lamp, but when it approaches the wall, the wall gets illuminated. And these were like really strong confidence boosters for us. Then uh, after that one, we realized that as a company, by doing a, an add-on, we will not ever get anywhere because the quality of the VR headsets is not nearly there where it needs to be. So we realized that we actually need to do a whole system. We need to become a product company, not a technology company. And that put us on track that you see here on this table various stages of various human eye resolution prototypes. It all started from the blue cardboard box that we demonstrated to our uh, uh, chairman of the board, dear chairman of the board, we have an idea to pivot from doing this add-on onto starting a whole new journey on creating human eye resolution headsets. And this cardboard proves it's all real. <laughs> uh, then we very soon started miniaturizing, miniaturizing, but at all stages we always validated each step so that we are going to the right direction and adjusted if needed. And it was a lot of hard work and these validations that made it possible for us to go from absolutely nothing into world-leading mixed reality company in less than three years. That's amazing. Yeah. So <clears throat> we will today now show you the, the story of how we together developed one of the most advanced use cases for, for mixed reality that has ever been. And uh, as you see on the slide, we... Uh, had a first introduction to each other in January last year. And uh, on that meeting, we presented a suggestion for you at Vario mm -hmm. about what we wanted to do at, at Volvo. And uh, one and a half year later, we presented this in, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will bring you through this story with all the problems we need to, needed to uh, overcome and, uh, and the very close collaboration that we had in a very good and successful way. Yeah, yeah, it was really a pleasure working with you guys because it was, it felt like we were all the time working as the same team yeah. and with the same goal and we were flying to Gothenburg for mm. the test tracks and uh, all the time uh, sharing everything that we had problems with completely openly. Yeah, and as you can see on the slide, we met first in January, then we spent almost half a year just signing a contract to figure things out, how to work together. And then it took approximately one year to develop the, the solution. And I will start now to give you the same presentation as I gave Vario one and a half year ago. So we had been thinking at Volvo about that we needed some type of more advanced and very fast prototyping uh, rig to be able to put the user really in the experience. So this is the exact same presentation. So we figured that what if we take a person, put that one in the car and put a headset on that person 
and add two cameras in the front of the headset. And at that time we didn't know that you were actually working on a really good pair of XR1 headsets. Yeah, of course, because we had been focusing almost purely on the VR side. So we had a couple of guys who all the time continued working on the mixed reality side and we had started very close collaboration with a Japanese company called Social Next on doing some of the very core parts of the technology. Mm. But as one of the realizations on the market, which was that VR is something that companies use actively today and mixed reality is something for the future, we decided to, as a small company, you need to have a focus. So we started focusing on the VR one. So of course, yeah. all of our outgoing messages were also about the VR. And we had been showing that one to Volvo already, I think a year before you guys yes. came for the first time on uh, what is Mario's human eye resolution uh, virtual reality. Yeah. So that was basically what I know when we presented yeah. to you guys. So it was fun when Casper came to pitch to us that can we do a video pass through mixed reality that we're like, Yes, this is exactly what we want to do. <laughs> yes, yes, we have it already. <laughs> so we divided this in six different steps. And in the first step, we said if we manage to drive a car with this headset with cameras in the front, capturing the reality and being able to drive in a safe way without getting motion sick. OK, then we would like to continue to the next step. And in the next step, we wanted to overlay data. And on the on the picture, you see that we have overlaid the graphical uh, HMI on the car. And if you want to overlay data on the physical car, then you, of course, need to bring in some type of very robust uh, tracking system because you want to have the data in the same position regardless of the, of the position of the headset. And if we manage to do that, we would like to continue to the next step, which would be to be able to interact with the virtual content. And there are like two ways to interact with it. Either as a user, you're touching things and you will have a reaction, or being able to use the signals of the car mm. because there's a massive amount of signals that are, you know, traveling around in the car doing different things and we want to use them to do the same thing but on the virtual content. So that would be the next step. And if we manage to do that, we also would like to use eye tracking data and I don't think we really know that you had really good eye tracking at that time either because... Uh, we also, I don't think that we even had tremendously good eye tracking at that stage. We had been brewing that for a couple of years yeah. uh, but it wasn't quite ready for prime time yet at that stage. No. So, but that's a very common type of you know, equipment when you're developing cars because you want to know where people are looking because mm -hmm. we want to be able to do a post analysis of what the tests we're doing and figuring out what is the best and, uh, way to go forward. So eye tracking is a very important tool for us. So we suggested that, that we would like to get some type of gay state out mm -hmm. of the headset. And in the last step, we also would like to, or in the second last step, we also like to get some virtual objects outside the car and uh, being able to get the car and the driver to respond on those objects. And then we had a final step, which was to put the cameras outside the car, because one of the problems when you film everything from the driver's point of view is that you will also capture the interior of the car that you are sitting in, like the physical car, which means that if you want to overlay another car, it's going to be pretty tricky with the occlusion and, the, and that type of thing. If the car you're driving is bigger than the car you want to overlay, then there might be a problem. So what if we put the cameras outside? And on that meeting, Vario actually said, OK, guys, we're going to do this with you. This is the most challenging use case we've ever seen for mixed reality. So we would really be glad to, to do this together. Yeah, for us, it made perfect sense because this is the most demanding possible mixed reality use case where you basically have people's lives on the line to make it, uh, uh, make it happen. And, and for us, uh, we felt that by advancing our technology to be able to cater for these needs, we will be catering for pretty much everybody else's mixed reality requirements. Yeah. So it yeah. was perfect, uh, a perfect uh, sparring partner for us mm -hmm. to get the mixed reality yeah. XR1 technology so on, on shape. Pushing each other's boundaries, yes. really. So you said, you said yes at that meeting mm -hmm. to step one to five, because step six was something pretty new, I guess, for you. So, so we decided on step one to five. Yeah. And we also presented the number of use cases that we had been thinking about. And there is a massive amount of you know, benefits for an uh, automotive manufacturer to have this type of technology. We can basically evaluate everything that we are doing in other type of uh, rigs today, like static rigs or mm -hmm. simulators or uh, even VR and cave environment but this would add the sense of the reality. 
for example, if you evaluate distraction or something and you do that in a simulator, it really doesn't matter if you're looking at the screen too long and you know, run off the road. But just the fact that you're in a real car on a real road evaluating distraction, that would add a lot of validity to the results. So we have a huge list of use cases to speed up the development and also being able to get more valid results. That would be the huge benefit for the automotive industry. So, yeah. but while we were writing the contract, you did some homework. Yeah, of course. So, so we have been proceeding with Social Next and uh, again validating that we can actually pull this off before we sign any kind of contract. So mm -hmm. you need to do your own homework as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the very first video utilizing the Social Next technology uh, for the mixed reality. And in here, we basically have this uh, motorcycle in our office's demo room. And you can see how the shadows are being cast completely naturally, the thing stays put in there. Everything works in this very controlled environment already beautifully. Of course, that does not mean that it works in real world, no. which we faced and, and realized very fast when we started the actual collaboration on the summer 2018. Yes. So for the first trial, we had a very, very simple setup, only a Steam tracking system, no overlaid content, and the Vario headset. And we use Unity as the rendering engine for this. And uh, in the right lower corner, you can see the film of the actual first time we drive the car. So mm -hmm. my colleague Timmy from Volvo, he's driving the car on our test track at Volvo in Gothenburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a lot of tries that day. And one of the most important outcome was that it actually was possible to drive with the yeah. car. Yeah. And uh, we figured out that the Steam tracking wasn't good enough, but we yeah, that before we started, but we yeah. needed to try it anyway. Yeah, uh, one of the really cool things that almost instantly when we signed the contract, the next day we had a Volvo car uh, mm -hmm. in our doorstep, and we started doing actually these Steam VR trials. We did those on a, um, a parking lot in a very slow speeds, very controlled, good quality uh, uh, pavement, and it was working there pretty okay. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. thought that okay, maybe this is. This is going to be maybe good enough. We find some challenges when we go to the actual uh, uh, track. And, and yes, we did face quite a lot and yeah. realize that this is never going to be mm. good enough and we need to do something else. And that's one when we actually found uh, ART, a German uh, optical system tracking uh, provider and, and start working with them on how to actually track yes. the headset inside the car. Mm. Uh, but it was a very successful trial anyway because we managed to actually drive the car. Yes. So that was, we managed the first step basically. Yeah. And for the next uh, trial, we, as you said, added a new tracking system. That was the only difference. Uh, and we also added a very simple head-up display, a static head-up display that was uh, showing the same uh, image at all time. So here we, can, yes, and also uh, you tried a different yeah, uh, tracking systems in your office. Yes, we, d we did. And, and of, of course, for example, here we have a few of them at the same time. So we were uh, quantifying which one is, is yes. good enough. And, and first deemed that this very easy to set up ART system was mm. uh, sufficiently good for yeah. the need. Mm. And then we went to the track again, the yes. reality hits. And since we added art as a tracking system, we also needed to have a passive body on the headset mm. so, uh, with sensors. And you can see them on those pictures. Uh, and for the first time, we also managed to drive with overlay data. And here you can see the static image of the head-up display, but it's still very jumpy. Yeah. So it's not good enough. Uh, so we figured that we need to do some changes still to the yes. tracking system. Uh, and, and then you yeah we started some... working on the on the software side so here you first saw a, a real a sphere and then a virtual sphere mapped on top of that one so we used IMDU data to stabilize uh, the video stream completely we called this super glue at that stage mm. it was uh, super good for any human uh, induced mo movements yeah. what we didn't realize that it's simply not good enough for the vibrations that cars actually create, yeah. which are mm. sometimes very rapid and fast. Yeah. So, and you don't know, really know what routes you're driving Exactly. On, so. so again, in the so. controlled environment, it was all fine. Yeah. <laughs> but at the second trial, we also managed to drive in dark conditions, which was a surprise for me yeah. that, that would work so fine with so you know, small amount of light and still we managed to drive in a safe way. So that was also a very nice surprise for us. Yeah. 
And we also got introduced to your newly developed tracking system. So yes. what, what do we see here? Yeah, Udo? so this is, uh, this is actually like the first time I also saw our, <laughs> our eye tracking in mixed reality because the guys had been going really fast on the, on the eye tracking for VR. But then uh, the mixed reality team only for the first time actually tried it at Volvo's premises to get it working yeah. and it, it was super interesting and this created like really the sensation that oh this is going to be something completely different than what we can actually achieve in yeah. VR. Yeah. So really, really fantastic super trial. Super precise really. Yeah. So for the third trial we did some major changes to the setup because now we wanted to also be able to extract the signals from the car and that is actually a lot of work although you could think it just like to plug in a computer but it's not mm. so we actually needed to physically break out some of the some of the signals and we needed to be able to read all the signals on the flex ray buses and we also installed a web server in the car because we wanted to uh, we, we handle the the graphical interfaces in the car as mm. web pages basically. So yeah. when you interact with them, we just change the web page. So we needed a web server. And also we installed a home developed system called Beagle, which are managing all those signals and can send them to different, different applications through MQTT. So we are using that to communicate with Unity. And for the next try, we actually added some more overlays with a real display and some real, uh, real head-up display with also injected signals from the car. Yeah. So what you will see here is, yeah, and of course you did some... Uh, yeah, small updates to the tracking uh, system, making it a bit, bit more robust and usable in the yes. environments, but yeah. the usual things, yeah. things improve. So here we can see the film from that test and as you can see we have a head-up display and when you press the steering wheel switch you also activate the Google Assist that you see on the head-up display and we have a new graphical interface on the uh, center stack display and also in front of the steering wheel. Yeah, the video quality you see here is was representative of, of, of that times totally uncalibrated cameras and we had just added a new recording function that was recording yes. at the full speeds, but it was only taking uh, like our context display st stream raw. So the black area you see there was our blending function at that time. We yeah. changed that significantly later on, but uh, uh, we weren't able to do like a clean recording, but this was the raw, raw one that actually goes to the display, yeah. but super cool stuff already at that stage. Yes. And, yeah. and it's very representative for the work we did because uh, each time we met, you brought over a new headset or an improved head headset yeah. that you solved some problems and we dis discovered some new problems and you went home again and you fixed those problems. So during this trial, we had the problem with the focus display. Yeah, so that was design, a, yeah. build, uh, fail mm -hmm. and iterate. Yeah. That was the cycle. And at this time, the purpose wasn't to get like this perfect image out of the headset. The purpose was just to make the system work. Basically. Yeah, this so wasn't the... Uh, uh, advertisement video no, for sure. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and for the last trial, we changed to a new, more advanced and more expensive yeah. uh, tracking system, the Art 5C system uh, that you tried at home here at the office. And yeah. we figured that that would be the best solution. And we made some super uh, rigorous mounting of that in the car to get a really good. Uh, uh, rigid body movement of, of the complete uh, tracking system. Yeah. Also the distance between these tracking cameras to push them further away yeah. from the driver so yeah. that we have a nice reliable uh, recording. So mm. that was also a nice yeah. addition. And for the final setup and the nice shooting we did at this time, we also added a complete interior of the car. We also added external objects mm. and uh, a really nice head-up display. And the cool thing with this head-up display you're gonna see in the next film, that one was developed in like two days at the design department, sketching a new type of system, and then we implemented it in one day and we did the shooting of the film yeah. the third day. So and super we, fast iterations. Yeah, and we had been calibrating. Now, at this stage, uh, the cameras were calibrated. The colors are going to be good, bright, mm. saturated, mm. sky is blue. Yeah. and the leaves are green. Yeah. So like night and day difference between the previous videos. Yeah. So here we are outside Gaffenberg on a closed road though, but it's a public road. And uh, we did a lot of shots this day to make the film you saw in the introduction. And now we're running down this rural road and you can see the trackers on the A pillar on the IP of the car. 
and suddenly now we transfer this XC90 to a uh, XC60 that we have overlaid over the physical car and we have this bluish transition thing first and uh, now you're gonna see the XC60 instead so the experience is that you drive in a car that is a totally different car and as you can see we also keep the mirrors physical because mm. it's easiest you don't need to simulate the rear view and now we switch back to the XC90 again and now we display the head-up display that we developed in one day implemented in one day and here it is and you can see that all the signals from the car are injected to this head-up display and also we fake some of the signals actually we have like battery range but it's not a battery car so we can actually manipulate things and and create whatever we want to do in these development phases and that is one of the huge strength with it with mm. this setup really yeah. and uh, we also provided some uh, navigation type of uh, ideas we had to, to to guide people when they are driving and in this next video we see the active safety case that we wanted to showcase mm. uh, and when you drive the car here on this road the car is detecting a wild animal in the forest and then we take away the unnecessary information for the driver and we pop up this warning message there's a moose crossing in front of you so the driver needs to stop the car to uh, not have an accident and when you look at the moose that crosses the road it actually gets detected due to the eye tracking in your in your device yeah so these are two examples of how we will use this at Volvo during development to be able to evaluate these type of systems. Yeah, and of course for Vario, these are the only things that we have seen ever what you have been doing with uh, devices because obviously Vario never gets to see the future products of Volvo. No, it of would course. be fantastic to actually someday see of course. Uh, like uh, five years down the road or whatever yeah. it is when you have actually shipped yeah. one of these products to see exactly. what you actually did yeah. there. That we would can, be fantastic. We can do a, 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 a review of that later. I think. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. So this picture just shows all the things we have in the car. Uh, we have loads of technology. I'm not going to go into all of it, but we stack most of it in the back of the car and we have a control uh, area behind the passenger seat. And of course, the Vario heads in the front seat and the in the 5C cameras mounted in front of the driver. And here you can see some pictures of this. We installed everything in an XC90. We have the technology there in the in the in the back of the car. And we also did some a lot of changes to the car in order to be able to, for example, charge the car, which seems like a really simple thing, but you want to be able to start the equipment and have the car on charging and then just unplug it without everything stopping so mm. you can go out and test drive. So we did a lot of uh, things on our side to, to make this uh, a really useful rig with like easy to use. And here you see the control panel in the back seat and the 5C cameras, and we actually bolt them into the structure of the car. So one in the A pillar, the mm. sheet metal structure of the car, and in the IP, the magnesium frame of the, the IP. And in the right lower corner, you see this breakout box, because when you're not using like an ex doing an experiment, you need to be able to drive the car in a safe way. So you need to bring it back to production status so we can swap between production car and prototype car, basically stealing the signals or just let the car have the signals. And then yeah, in of San course. Francisco, what did yeah. you do there? Yeah, so, so of course we launched the XR1 uh, for the first time at Augmented World Expo in San Francisco. And uh, for that one we had the distinct pressure of uh, having Volvo, uh, Casper and Timmy from Volvo with us on that launch tour. And it was ab absolutely stellar. Uh, we had reserved basically one floor of a building so that we can have a full-size car there. So the press can actually have a feel how it feels to transform a physical space into something entirely different, yeah. like a, a static version of, of the real driving experience, yeah, exactly. in a sense. And uh, then Casper uh, and Timmy were able to actually tell to the press the story how they have actually been utilizing this now in the real development of car for some months. And mm -hmm. of course, our journey has been longer, but yeah. mostly it hasn't been, uh, uh, it wasn't at that stage uh, in actual production use. But once we had passed that fifth milestone, mm. you guys were actually able to start utilizing <coughs> it, which was fantastic. Yeah. And it was just not a story, it was a true story. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that was really fantastic uh, mm -hmm. to do together. And of course, uh, blew everybody's minds when they yeah. saw it. So what happened with the last step then that we didn't, you know, included in this yeah, cooperation. Yet, yet. Yes, but still we wanted to, to, to try to, to conduct the last step. So 
uh, in parallel we worked at Volvo to trying to, to, to do this, to put the cameras outside the car. And uh, so we took three cameras that we had at home, we put them on the roof of the car, we made this very simple stitching software and stitched them statically. And uh, it actually worked pretty good. So this is something that we want to continue to work with mm -hmm. because we think that's going to be the most amazing step where you can actually delete the whole car. You yeah. really take away all the boundary conditions for what you can do. You could actually be in the car driving a boat if you want to. So <laughs> you could do anything and you can delete the car totally and drive and sit in the air uh, above the road. Yeah. So this next film is going to show you the first prototype we did. It's not perfect and it's not you know, the final version, but it gives you a sense of what we're trying to achieve. So here we're sitting in a virtual car, but we're sitting in a physical car, but you see just a virtual car. And as you can see, the steering wheel has been also connected to the signals of the car. So we get the angle of the steering wheel. And in front of the car, you have this uh, curved surface. And we take the film, stitch film camera mm -hmm. stream, and we transfer that to a, a, a texture and map that on this curved screen, basically. That's how we did it. And so you can see, we can perfectly drive now without actually seeing anything just through the cameras on the roof. Yeah. And uh, you can also see here soon that we can actually delete the car from the scene. Now you only have the steering wheel. Yeah. So imagine if the field of view would be bigger here, like in both directions, then you would feel like you were floating above the road and you could add anything without, you know, having to uh, struggle with the occlusion and stuff like that. Yeah. Anecdotally, I can actually reveal that um, something that we haven't been able to discuss before, but today we're demonstrating at Slush the world's first human eye resolution video stream going all the way from 5G phone to 5G network to 5G computer that shows it in VR. And the quality is simply phenomenal, like it's fully immersive and running at the full human eye resolution. It feels like you are physically in a different yeah. place and that's like a one of the advancements that we have been doing in this uh, area of video streaming and, yeah. and one that I believe that will fundamentally be uh, uh, engaging telepresence across the world uh, in, mm. in very interesting mm. ways and also one of the precursors to take this experience onto very high fidelity. Yeah. So looking forward to do yeah. something in that in the future. Yeah. And the cool thing with having like the camera externally is that you could also do this with a Vario VR1 or VR2 as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, now uh, at Vario, we just announced at uh, uh, München uh, at the Augmented World Expo the VR2 and the VR2 Pro. Much improved optics, uh, much better image quality, much better calibrations for the uh, colors, mirror corrections, all that jazz, as well as on the Pro model, hand tracking. Especially interesting yeah. for the use cases like this virtual reality car use case mm. or training use cases where you really, lo and behold, want to use your hands if you want to train to operate in the real world. Exactly. So um, really pleased to have those. And, and we are still now on track to actually announce very soon the avail availability of the XR1, mm. uh, our absolute flagship product at Vario. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank so, you. Yeah, and if your guys are interested, go to Vario.com and, and purchase Vario 2 VR2 Pro or VR2 units. Yeah. Yeah, they're available. Shipping. Yeah. So, thank you. That's yeah, thanks, story. Kasper. Okay, so we have some questions uh, from online. I trust that uh, everybody sees those, but uh, I'll just reiterate them uh, anyway about the depth data. Is it a two-dimensional data synchronized to each right and left image? So uh, yes, we are actually capturing uh, for both of the eyes video stream and synchronizing that one uh, with the display rendering. So this is raising the beam type of solution. Uh, our uh, latency from photon, first photon hitting the sensor to first photon emitting from the display that repres represents that data is 12 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Out of that one, we have six milliseconds of accumulating the data on the sensor, so basically shutter uh, when it comes to the old school cameras. Mm. And, and then it's six milliseconds of sending the data, uh, merging it with the virtual content and sending it back to the headset and then having the display actually start emitting those photons. Mm. So it's incredibly low latency. And what we have seen in our uh, test is mm. that really 
uh, the, the demand in mixed reality is actually, uh, it's more demanding for the latency than virtual reality mm. is. Yeah. So uh, we, we first, on our first trial, we were maybe 35 milliseconds, mm. and then it started gradually coming closer and closer. And I don't think it was before the fourth trial that we actually had a decent latency. Under 15, under 15 yeah. I think it was done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. So, and, and that was a huge, huge amount of work. Mm. And I mean, to utilize this use case, I mean, you need to be somewhere around or below 15. Yeah, I think. Because say. otherwise, when you look away from the road, you start to drift. So it's very, very important. Yeah. One of the most important things. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. And is the resolution the same as Bionic images? No, the mixed reality signal is not quite on the same level. It's running at roughly 35 pixels per degree. So, uh, like, incredibly sharp, but not on the full human eye mm. resolution yet. What about the occlusion? Yeah. So we have now uh, also depth map available uh, from the uh, on the XR1 on the SDK, and in, in uh, certain cases you can have a very nice and beautiful occlusion. Uh, I would say that uh, when we actually start shipping it, it's going to be in this beta level, uh, quality-wise, and we are going to be improving that one mm. in the. Uh, upcoming software releases, but it's yeah. it is actually, for example, when you look at your hands inside VR, mm. they're now beautifully segmented, and they look like you can have a virtual world all around you. Mm. But when you look at your body, it is there. It's you, mm. which is with you in mm. the virtual world. It's uh, and for the use case we presented here, I mean, although you're in mixed reality, you still want to have occlusion in the end because oh, because yes. if you overlay a car interior, you don't see your hands anymore. So you still need to occlude the mm. hands. That would be one of the things that we missed in this yes. this thing. But that's yeah. really relevant, of course. Yeah, and now possible as well. Yeah, and now possible. So yeah, are these glasses? Oh, what? Sorry, that happened. Sorry, which department is leading this at Volvo? IT or R and D? It's R&D, and, uh, and uh, we work at, the, at a department called uh, Customer Experience Center, and we own parts of user experience, and we validate the cars. And we also have a place called Human Centric Laboratory, and that's where we develop this car. And the purpose of that place is to be the, the place where we interact cross-functionally across the company to solve stuff that requires a human in the center to be able to evaluate things. Mm. So we are in charge of all the advanced rigs that we developed to put the user in the experience. So it's an, it's an R&D effort, I would say. But still, we also had one person from the, in the project from the design department, actually, uh, one of our uh, visualization experts. So, but it's an R&D thing, I would say. Yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, so then uh, coming back. OK, the legal requirements yeah. to drive this on the road. Uh, I mean, we only we are only drawing this on the on a public road once when we did the film shooting. Mm. Otherwise, we're using test tracks because I mean that's sufficient usually. Uh, but I would say the aim for us is actually to be able to drive this in real traffic. I mean, yeah. that's that's what we want to do. And uh, I don't think there are any legal requirements that you could actually read about to do this use case. Yeah. And when we, because I mean, nobody has ever done this before. Mm. So um, of course the legislation comes after the need of doing something. But what we planning to do is that, uh, to show the world that if you could, for example, take your driving license, wearing this type of glasses while driving, and if you manage to pass the test, okay, then I guess it's perfectly safe in terms of maneuvering the car and being able to drive the car. Yeah. But then of course you have this, uh, problem with the technology if you get a blackout in the headset, for example. So you need to be really careful in a way. But we have some, some uh, ideas how to solve that as well, mm -hmm. because we want to use redundant control of the car and uh, redundant drivers and stuff like that. So, uh, but when we did the shooting on the public road, uh, we just called the authorities and said, we're going to do this. And they said, yeah, we can't find anything that is you know, you're violating anything when you do this. So, but for security reasons, of course, we, we blocked the road of yeah. course, when we did this. Yeah, safety first. Yeah, safety first. Okay. <sighs> Amazing work, Mario. Uh, and Volvo, I would say. This yeah. has been like absolutely fantastic cooperation. So it's, it's something that you uh, sometimes read in the books and it's fantastic to actually experience yeah. it in real. Mm -hmm. Uh, are these glasses able to become smaller as, uh, uh, in size in the future? 
uh, they could be used in spaces where space is limited. Yes, mm -hmm. um, technology tends to uh, improve, things iterate, things become smaller, uh, faster, better, uh, yeah. costs go down, it is the nature um, mm. of, of technology development. So in the future things will be smaller for sure. Yeah, That's and it's a super relevant question because one of the uh, problems we had was when you looked over your left shoulder, mm. since the car is quite compact as yeah. well, you might hit the headset into the B pillar. So I mean, it's really relevant that uh, minimize the size of yes. the stuff. Yes. yes. Okay, any other use cases Volvo sees possible with Vario products? For example, in car production, operational side? Of course, I mean, we've just seen the dawn of the things we can do with your, with your stuff. And I would say like each day almost we get requests mm. from all over the company. Not only R&D, but design R&D and also IT and all the different attributes we have at Volvo Cars, I mean at the old car companies. They want to be able to evaluate their stuff more accurate, more, you know, uh, valid and, and being to verify thing. And, and the things you're supplying here, they're gonna actually change the way we are working in terms of shutting down, you know, other types of equipments like the cave maybe, for yeah. example. We use the cave for economic evaluations, but now we think that this is going to be replaced with a pair of Vario headsets instead. So we have multiple use cases and we come up with new ideas, I mean, basically every day. And the problem is now that we just don't have time to do everything, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, for sure, right. yes, there would be a lot of more different usage for this. Yeah. So it's still, uh, XR was still on schedule to release second half, yes. We are uh, having uh, news very soon about this one. So, mm. uh, yeah. yeah, nicely on track. So, how many external cameras and outside the car for the step six uh, and a consideration development the related self driving cars in the future? Okay. Uh, in this case, we just had three cameras because it was just like first trial. Mm. Uh, but we are looking into other solutions for this as well to use other type of stitching because we don't want to add any latency to the system when we drive with it. So I guess in the future we would like to do this with maybe two super wide angle cameras mm. catching everything in the front of the car and everything in the rear of the car. And uh, in terms of uh, uh, autonomous drive system, systems in the future, I think uh, I'll pass that question because it's not within my field. So I would actually recommend you to contact our, our corporate uh, communication department for that, I would say. It's not within my, my area. How about HoloLens? Are you using that still? Uh, yes, we have been using HoloLens uh, in the past, but mm. for totally different use cases. Nothing like this. Mm. Uh, but uh, yes, we do have HoloLenses. I mean, we do have most of the headsets out there at Volvo, of course, like all big OEMs. But we are switching over to use video path through mixed reality. Yeah. The opportunities are so much greater with that. So we don't or I at least don't really believe in that technology that could compete for the things we're doing with real video path through. Yeah, you all. really need that control. Yes, and also field of view and I mean, all the possibilities we have with this type of equipment, so. Yeah. Do you plan to make a product with standalone headset? I assume this is for Vario, not for Volvo. Yeah. <laughs> Although it would be interesting so. to see from you guys as well. Um, we see that uh, standalone is definitely going to be changing the expectation levels of people in the future. So we are, of course, conscious about the market requirements. Having said that one, Vario is all about the quality uh, of the image. And we don't currently see that there is a good viable track to have a, a CPU and GPU of 10 watts to be able to create the kind of quality that, for example, industrial designers at Volvo mm. uh, would be needing to see the car appear in the same way as it is in real life. And yes. that will ultimately need much more hundreds of watts of compute power. And that uh, basically as a result pushes it outside of the boundaries to make it meaningful mm. to do a standalone headset with human eye resolution, at least at this stage. Mm. All right, so, so um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, Kasper, for yeah. coming to Helsinki and to Slush. Yes. It has been utter pleasure working with you. And thank you, thank you for everybody on the line to, uh, for joining on the session and uh, asking really great and tough questions. So mm. appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.
Volvo Varia collaboration enables us to be the world first car company to be able to drive with the mixed reality headset on the real road. With XR1, we are able to explore digital objects as natural extensions of the real world. Varia's vision is to create mixed reality where you cannot tell apart anymore what is real and what is virtual. We wouldn't be able to test active safety scenarios against a real person. For the first time, we could overlay virtual objects such as virtual pedestrians and virtual mooses. We were able to expose them to that scenario. It creates an emotion when they see that the car saved both their life, but also uh, the people around the car. The headset is the world's best eye tracking system. It allows us to interact with our eyes in real time and also being able to capture uh, what the users are looking at while we drive on the road. I'm creating uh, an experience through lights in the interior of the car. And yeah, often it's difficult to simulate uh, light. I can't really touch light and I can't really create the light. All of a sudden I can create whatever light environment I want to have in the car. The future is here. You can literally recreate whatever you want and simulating in a way that you can't even know if it's real or not. So the Vario XR1 headset is really a game changer when it comes to speeding up the development process. On the road, we could add any feature or graphics or design. We could actually make the car see a virtual object and react to it as if it was a real object. We could also see what did the driver look at during the test. To understand the driver behavior is a key part of the development. You have a mixed reality where it starts to be possible to have things where you doubt yourself. Is that real? Is it mixed reality? Is it virtual? What is it? Varya's vision has been from the very beginning to create photorealistic mixed reality where you cannot tell apart anymore what is real and what is virtual. We use very high quality cameras that are incredibly low latency and they are able to capture the reality, digitize it in real time, mix it, bend it however we want and then what we do is that we show it through our human eye resolution VR headset. And this is what makes the XR1 truly unique.